Okay, Lao Gama, what's there to say? It's quickly becoming one of the most popular chili sauces in the world. It's beloved in China and increasingly the West. the chili sauce. And really, it's for a good reason. It's got just the right kick of spice for an all-purpose sauce. It's fermented ingredients give it a ton of complexity. It's just something awesome to toss on white rice or really whatever. But I don't think enough people know that Lao Gama isn't its own unique invention. Lao Gama belongs to a category of chili sauces from the Guizhou province called Yola Jiao. So today we wanted to show you how Guizhou Yola Jiao fits in with the context of the cuisine there, a bit on how Lao Gama got started and what makes them unique, and finally give you a recipe for how to make it yourself at home, because traditionally this is stuff that Guizhou families could and would make themselves. Everyone's familiar with Sichuan food and why not? It's a great cuisine but it's far from the only province in China that loves their chilies. There's an old, increasingly worn out saying in Chinese that the Sichuanese can handle their heat, that the neighboring Hunan province certainly isn't afraid of their chilies, but that people in Guizhou are afraid of food that's not spicy enough. And while that quip's definitely a bit on the hackneyed side these days, it does, I think, speak to at least part of the essence of Guizhou cuisine. Guizhou food is intensely spicy, sour, smoky, and makes heavy use of fermented ingredients. A common aromatic is yuxing cao, which I love, but I've seen others gag on. It's a cuisine with strong, bold, and unrepentant flavors, a suitable analogy for the province itself. It's hard drinking, packed to the brim with street food, it's got that sort of charismatic grit to it. And they do certainly love their chilies. A fundamental ingredient in the cuisine is a chili paste called tsubala jiao, or pounded chili, that can serve as a basis for braises and stir fries, and we've covered that on this channel before. Hula jiao, or roasted chili flake, is another classic. And similarly, they also have a chili sauce called yola jiao, commonly translated into English as chili crisp. You can see it as a topping in snacks like jen fun, rice noodle rolls. It's a great dipping sauce for any number of things. You'll see it as an optional topping in the increasingly popular yang rou fun lamb rice noodle soup. And it can even be found in a simple breakfast sticky rice bowl. But here's the thing. There's not just one yola jiao. Different families and different restaurants make their own versions, which is why you see so many different types of Laogama chili sauce. Some have a strong hit of docher, that is, black fermented soybeans. Some include a spate of crispy fried stuff, and others will even include a bit of chicken or beef jerky. So it's in this kind of culture that Laogama was born. While these sorts of origin stories are almost always apocryphal, the story goes like this. The original founder of Laogama, Tao Hua Bi, had a liangfen stall on the side of the highway outside of the capital Guiyang. Liangfen is a dish that's usually topped with yola jiao, and Tao Hua Bi's was quite popular. In particular, people raved about her chili sauce topping. It was so popular that she started making bigger and bigger batches and selling some of that chili topping to other vendors. One day, she was feeling a bit on the lazy side and decided to not make the topping, and as a result, she saw her customers going elsewhere. It was at this point that she realized that people really loved her chili sauce, not her liangfen, and decided to go strictly into the sauce-making business. So perhaps with a bit of a first-mover advantage, Lao Gamma moved products fast, and in the early 2000s started rapidly expanding outside of Guizhou and into other parts of China. As to why it became so huge, Occam's razor, it tastes good. But I think at least part of it also has to do with China's internal migration, especially when I first moved to Shenzhen. Sometimes I'd see friends from other provinces reach for Lao Gama because the cuisines here on the coast tend to be more mild than the interior. So at least for them, Lao Gama was a decent answer, something that they could eat with rice when their Cantonese canteen just wasn't doing it for them. So right, how to make chili crisp. Recently, we've seen a spate of recipes online in English for this stuff, but in the end, most of them seem to use Sichuanese technique rather than Guizhou. So at the very least, we figured that it might be useful to clear the air a bit. So the variety of chili crisp we'll be making is sanding, or three dice chili crisp. If you've had that logama with the fried tofu inside, that's the sort we're talking about. Together with the chili, it's got peanuts, datotsai preserved turnip, and of course, some of that crispy tofu. But even if you go in a different direction, the fundamental technique here should work with whatever chili crisp you wanna make. So first, let's talk chilies. The base of a chili crisp is those hula jiao that I was talking about before. Depending on the kitchen, these are either toasted on wok or roasted on ashes. We went with the former, but feel free to play around with the latter if that slight smoky hit sounds a bit more up your alley. Now the specific cultivar that Laogama uses is a Guizhou chili called chicken claw pepper. 
These are actually not overly spicy, which is why the chili crisp isn't overpowering. So outside China, I'd recommend subbing these primarily with Kashmiri chilies. They've got a very similar color and flavor. Chicken claw pepper is a touch spicier though, so if you'd like, you can also add a touch of arbols or cayennes to your mix. Personally, I'd probably do a ratio of three parts Kashmiri to one part arbol. So take your chilies, snip off the stems, and cut into one centimeter pieces. And then these are ready to toast. So to a cool wok, add in the chilies together with about 250 grams of salt and set that over a medium flame. The purpose of the salt here is to help these heat evenly because dried chilies do have this annoying tendency to scorch. Once you start to hear small popping sounds after about two minutes, turn your heat to low. This means that your salt is hot enough. Now continue to stir and toast those for about five minutes. What you'll be looking for is the chilies to get roughly chestnut colored, but as it always is with chilies, it's safer to under toast here than over toast. So strain out the salt, give the chilies a good number of wax to shake off any excess, and then these are good to pound. Definitely don't waste the salt here though. The chilies won't impart much of a flavor, so this will all still be good to reuse. Now add the chilies to a mortar and pound it into a flake. You should be able to use a food processor for this too, but you definitely don't want it to be too fine. Going at it by hand, some of the chilies will get into more of a powder and some will be a larger flake, which is perfect for a chili crisp. And now that you've got your toasted chili flake, set that aside. Now for our other ingredients. To give the sauce a bit of complexity, we've got a bit of docher, black fermented soybeans. As an aside, Laogama uses their own proprietary method for making docher. It's even been the subject of lawsuits. Here we're just using 30 grams of a bog standard Cantonese docher, which you can find on Amazon or at like any Chinese supermarket. To those, add an equal amount of baijiu liquor, and maybe sub that for bourbon if you can't find baijiu. You'll probably want to do this step before anything else, because this is best soaked for at least two hours. Now for the tofu, we're using 60 grams of dogan, which is a sort of hyper-firm tofu. If you can't find this stuff, you could alternatively press some extra-firm tofu, maybe swap it with a smoked tofu, or just skip it. Cut those into about half centimeter cubes, and we can give them a fry. So in a cool pot with about two cups of oil, Toss in your tofu cubes and turn the flame to medium. Let those slowly fry and stir them periodically. We're not aiming for too heavy of a fry here. For reference, we were working at about 125 Celsius once everything got up to temperature. Once your tofu is starting to get golden brown after about 10 minutes or so, take it out. Last leg of the sanding, 40 grams of dato tsai preserved turnip. This adds a really nice flavor to the sauce, so definitely try to source it if you can. I have seen this stuff at Chinese supermarkets in the West, but if you're out of luck on that front, you could alternatively use an equal amount of Sichuanese jia cai, which is available online and at most Asian supermarkets. So get that into about a one centimeter dice and set it aside. Before we fry though, a quick aside about oils. Guizhou Yolajiao, Lao Gama included, uses an oil called Cai Ziyo as a base. It's a sort of virgin rapeseed oil that's fundamental to a lot of dishes in the Chinese Southwest, and here is no exception. If you can't find rapeseed oil, we'd recommend using Indian mustard seed oil instead. And if you can't find that, well, a nice peanut oil would still get the job done. So to a pot, add in one cup of your oil of choice and set that over max flame. Heat that up until it's just starting to smoke at about 220 centigrade, then turn off the heat. Heating the oil up first cooks the oil and removes its raw taste. A must here for rapeseed and mustard seed oil and preferable if using peanut. Once the oil's cooled down a bit to about 170, swap the flame to low and go in with some aromatics. This was two inches sliced ginger and about three cloves of crushed garlic. Now fry those for about two minutes or until the garlic's just barely starting to brown, then go in with a preserved turnip or jia cai. Then fry all that for about five minutes until the preserved vegetable starts to shrink a bit. Then remove the garlic and the ginger and optionally go in with one block of furu, fermented tofu. This isn't mandatory or anything. Many Yolajiao sauces don't include it, but it adds a nice, subtle, fermented undertone if you do happen to have some lying around. So add in the mashed furu, give it a mix, then go in with the black fermented beans and the baijiu, bit by bit so it doesn't pop too hard on you. Fry that for another five minutes or until most of the moisture is bubbled away, then go in with the chili flakes. Now it should be noted that we're still over a flame here. Low heat, about 90 to 100 centigrade, but still. A major difference between Guizhou Chili Crisp and Sichuanese Chili Oil is this step right here. 
Sichuanese chili oil adds hot oil to the chili flake and then lets it steep, but here we're going to be frying this over low heat for about 5 minutes. This is what makes the chili crisp, well, crispy. So at this point, add in your fried tofu and a quarter cup of fried or roasted peanuts. Then season with a half teaspoon sugar and a half tablespoon of MSG. Quick mix, then add in about two teaspoons each of Sichuan peppercorns, toasted then ground, and sesame seeds, also toasted and then lightly pounded. Heat off, let it cool down a touch, then jar it up. For best results, let that sit and soak at least overnight. Uh, so does that make sense to make lao gamma at home? If you're just trying to mimic the taste of lao gamma, probably not. But the best thing about making your own is that you can make your own adjustments. For example, uh, we add furu in it, uh, which lao gamma doesn't have, but we really like the extra layer of flavor that adds to the sauce. Uh, for me, I really like the crispy tofu beds. Uh, that's why I put extra. And if you're like really into spicy food, you can try to use like really spicy chilies, or you can also use Mexican chilies. So just like play around with it and make your own sauce. So right, check out the rather link in the description box for a detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos. <laughs>